Welcome to the training Integrate with SP API, Step 2A, Set up a Test Selling Partner App Store Authorization Workflow. This video is designed for developers who want to integrate an application with Selling Partner API. It covers one version of the second step in the integration process, providing step-by-step -step instructions for a public seller application initiated from a Selling Partner App Store detail page. If you want to integrate a public seller or vendor application initiated from your own website, proceed to Step 2B, Set up a Test Website Authorization Workflow for relevant instructions. Or if you want to integrate a private seller or vendor application, proceed to Step 2C, Set up a Self-Authorization Procedure. We also cover earlier and later steps for SP API integration in other videos. And you can find written instructions for each step by searching for the Selling Partner API documentation website. Before you begin setting up a test workflow, you'll first need to construct an OAuth authorization URI to create it in and receive authorization. An OAuth authorization URI redirects a browser to a page where a seller can give your application consent to call SP API on their behalf. If the seller isn't signed into Seller Central, a sign-in page appears. To construct an OAuth authorization URI for a public seller application, start by getting the Seller Central URL for the stores where you want the seller to authorize your application. For example, sellercentral.amazon.com. You can find a full list of URLs on the Selling Partner API documentation website by selecting Seller Central URLs from the table of contents. Once you have the necessary URL, combine it with apps slash authorize slash consent, your application ID, and add the parameter version equals beta. For example, https sellercentral-europe.amazon.com slash apps slash authorize slash consent, your application ID, then version equals beta. Adding version equals beta indicates that the authorization workflow is for an application in draft status and creates an OAuth authorization URI you can use to test your authorization workflow later. Make sure you construct OAuth authorization URIs for the stores in which the seller will authorize your application. Authorizations are regional, so when, for example, the authorization is complete for a Seller Central account for Mexico, your application will have access to the seller's account in any store in North America. With your OAuth authorization URI constructed, you're ready to set up a test Selling Partner App Store authorization workflow. SP API's authorization model is based on Login with Amazon, or LWA, Amazon's implementation of OAuth 2.0. In this model, the seller authorizes your application by interacting with pages displayed by Amazon and your website. Actions taken by the seller trigger responses from your website or Amazon. The seller's browser is the user agent that passes parameters between your website and Amazon at each seller action. To set up an OAuth authorization, follow these two steps. 1. Configure your website to accept and process the parameters that Amazon passes to it. 2. Redirect the seller's browser and pass parameters to Amazon. Make sure you complete these steps with your application still in draft status so you can test your authorization workflow before listing your application in the Selling Partner App Store. Testing ensures that your application can exchange parameters with Amazon and receive authorization information. As a reminder, your application will be in draft status after registration or conversion from an MWS application. This occurs in Step 1 of the SP API integration process. To set up a test Selling Partner App Store authorization workflow, start by having the seller sign in to Seller Central, select Partner Network from the main menu, then click Selling Partner App Store. Next, have the seller navigate to the detail page for your application. On the detail page, the seller should click the Authorize Now button. The consent page for your application will appear. Have the seller review and accept the data access your application requested. Then click the Login to Now button. 
Your login URI, which you provided during application registration, will load into the browser. It will be combined with the parameters Amazon Callback URI, Amazon State, and Selling Partner ID. Amazon Callback URI is for redirecting the browser to Amazon. Amazon State is a state value generated by Amazon to guard against cross-site request forgery. And Selling Partner ID is the identifier of the seller authorizing your application. For this test workflow, be sure to add the version equals beta parameter at the end to authorize your application in draft status. Here's an example login URI. Next, have the seller sign into your website. If they don't have an account yet, they should complete your registration process first. Your application will load the Amazon Callback URI into the browser, adding the parameters Redirect URI, Amazon State, and State. Redirect URI is optional and is for redirecting the browser to your application. This must be an OAuth redirect URI that you specified when you registered your application. If you don't include the redirect URI parameter, the default is the first OAuth redirect URI that you specified when you registered your application. Amazon State is the value passed by Amazon in the previous step. And state is a state value generated by your application to maintain state between this request and the response. This helps guard against cross-site request forgery. Note, because OAuth information is passed via URI query parameters, we highly recommend that you ensure the state token is short-lived and verifiably unique to your user. We also recommend that you set the referrer policy, no referrer HTTP header, which prevents leaking sensitive information to other websites. For this test workflow, be sure to add the version equals beta parameter at the end to authorize your application in draft status. Here's an example Amazon callback URI. After the seller signs into your website, Amazon will send you the authorization information. To access the seller's data, have them sign into Seller Central. A page will appear indicating that Amazon is authorizing you to access their data. While this page is displayed, Amazon will load the OAuth URI you specified during registration. It'll display in the seller's browser. Amazon will add the parameters State, Selling Partner ID, MWS Auth Token, and SPAPI OAuth Code. MWS Auth Token is the value you use when you create a query string for a call to MWS and is only passed when the seller is authorizing a new hybrid SPAPI application. For more information about hybrid applications, visit the SPAPI documentation website. Click Authorizing Selling Partner API Applications in the Table of Contents, then click Hybrid Selling Partner API Applications. SPAPI OAuth code is an LWA authorization code that you'll exchange for an LWA refresh token in the next and final step of the Selling Partner App Store workflow authorization process. You'll want to complete that final step within five minutes before the code expires. Here's an example OAuth URI. Your application will validate the state value and save the selling partner ID, MWS Auth token if passed, and SPAPI OAuth code values. Your website's landing page will appear. Now let's review the last part of the Test Selling Partner App Store Authorization Workflow, which is exchanging an LWA authorization code for a long-lived LWA refresh token. If you'd like to use LWA SDK for JavaScript to help with the token exchange process, search for Login with Amazon, then search for Add the Login with Amazon SDK for JavaScript and Authorization Code Grant for more information. To initiate the exchange of an LWA authorization code for an LWA refresh token, have your application call the LWA authorization server httpsapi.amazon.com slash auth slash o2 slash token. The call must include the query parameters grant type, code, 
redirect URI, client ID, and client secret. Grant type is the type of access requested and must be authorization code. Code is the LWA authorization code you received earlier as the SPAPI OAuth code parameter. As a reminder, this code expires in five minutes. Redirect URI is the redirect URI for your application. And Client ID and Client Secret are part of your credentials. For instructions on getting these credentials, visit the Selling Partner API documentation website and select Viewing Your Application Information and Credentials from the Table of Contents. Here's an example call. The LWA authorization server will return the LWA refresh token. The response will be in JSON and will include the parameters access token, token type, expires in, and refresh token. An access token authorizes your application to take certain actions on behalf of the seller. You'll exchange the long-lived LWA refresh token for an LWA access token when you connect with SPAPI in step three of the integration process. Token type is the type of token returned, which should be bearer. Expires in is the number of seconds before the access token becomes invalid, which will be 3600 or one hour. And Refresh Token is the long-lived token that you'll exchange for an access token. Here's an example LWA Refresh Token. Your application will save the Refresh Token value, and the browser will display a page to the seller that provides next steps for using your application. At this point, your test Selling Partner App Store authorization workflow will be set up. After your test workflow is in place, you'll have completed Step 2A of the SPAPI integration process and will be ready to move to Step 3, connecting to SPAPI. We encourage you to watch the next video in our series to learn how to connect. Choose the relevant version based on the way you want to exchange the LWA refresh token you received at the end of Step 2A for an LWA access token. If you want to exchange a refresh token for an access token using a generated Java SDK, proceed to Step 3A, connect to SPAPI using a generated Java SDK. If you want to manually exchange a refresh token for an access token, proceed to Step 3B, connect to SPAPI manually. Thanks for watching.